Hello, everybody. How you doing? It's your boy, Ugo TV James. You are welcome to another edition on Be Inspired. I hope you are inspired wherever you do out there. In our life, in where we are today in our world, life is so challenging and people are giving up hope. And we are here to make sure that you stay inspired. And then I know that uh, wherever you are in diaspora, this is CleverNet TV, diaspora. Our aim is to bring people in diaspora together to celebrate their achievement. We want to hear your story. We want to talk to you. We want you to inspire us. So don't stay calm. Please kindly sign up to be part of Clever Nerd TV. Sign up as soon as possible. Don't hesitate. All right. Um, like I said before, our world is full of ups and downs. Our world is full of is full of uh, trials and tribulation. Um, we just want to make sure that you are staying alive and you are inspired in going in your daily journey, in your life journey. And this is the reason why we bring you this, this show, this, this particular show called Be Inspired with Ugo, to be James. Yes, and today on my show, on this show, actually, I have a very, very prominent person, a brother and a friend, and uh, he's a life coach and also a very motivational speaker and also somebody who's like a educational he likes to educate mindset and also mentor young people. And today he's a he's a, an entrepreneur and a businessman and also uh, he's done so many things. I can't even name it all. But anyway, we're going to meet him now. And his name is in Timbue, in Timbue, in Timbue, in Timbue. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for responding as soon as possible. Thank you for uh, creating time to be part of uh, being inspired show. Uh, so let's dive into it. Um, so let's get to meet you in Timbue. So I, I mean, I may not, I may not have been able to pronounce some of your pedigree uh, titles that you've earned in life. Uh, maybe you can correct us now. Can we meet you officially? Uh, thank you to, I, I would say, Dr. Ugo. I, I, love, I love reading the doctor before every name because the way, the, okay, the way you carry yourself, I see yourself as a doctorate in whatever you do because you are yeah. fantastic. Everything that you do, it's God blessed. And as for me, I always tell the same story. I'm still alive and still going strong. And it's by the mm. grace of God that I'm still alive. And mm. my name is in some way, and people always uh, have to try it seven times for them to actually get it right. But you are on mm. point. Yes. Yeah. And when I, I heard of your, your TV station, I was inspired to say, how can I get my life story to the rest of those that have lost hope, those who don't have yeah. a voice? Yeah. Because growing up, I was known as a noisemaker. But I did not know that being a noisemaker was actually... Beautiful, you have to be a life coach. <laughs> <laughs> all right, talking about being a noise maker. So tell mm -hmm. us, uh, when did it all begin? When, like, wh wh where are you from? Uh, what is your background like? And then, where, which, when did this dream of becoming a uh, life coach really began? Uh, um, I'm the last of five kids, uh, and I was born in Zambia in the year 1982. And in the year, no, 1982 is when I was born. And at the age of 10, I relocated from Zambia to South Africa. But you know, this was always part of my life. But I thought, because being the only child who was getting sick in the family, I saw myself mm. as a special child. But my mother always found a way of making me the golden child, even though I was the black sheep. So mm. I was the favorite, not knowing that there was something wrong with me. So getting mm. sick came so normal that even going to the hospital, was more pleasant than staying at home because in hospital I would choose the food that I would eat. So I spent mm. three quarters of my entire life in and out of hospital that even until today I can smell medication and tell what it is, even though I'm not a qualified doctor. Mm. And my, my vision started when I was put in the in a midst of a hundred people who asked me, why are you such a joyful person? Because good or bad times, you always rejoice. And I told mm. them, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. My happiness comes from being given a second chance to life. Mm. And when I told them to say, I was born with the HIV virus from birth, they got shocked to say, but how can you be joyful 
was something that kills people. And I yeah, saw that. Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah. Yes. I saw mm. a turning point to say, how am I going to channel what I went through in order to make a difference in people's lives? So mm. I told myself that I share my story on every media platform within one year. And I did mm. that in one year. So let's hear your story. Let's 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 get to hear the story of yours. Let, yes. Let's 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 just hear you. Just carry on. I want to hear the story of yours that you yes. that you have so much to share. And I don't want yes. to like uh, I don't want this to be like an interview where I'm asking no, 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 you a no, no. question. Stop. You know, oh, I yeah. just I want you to flow. I want uh, you to flow. Man, where, you know, yeah. when uh, when I was born, yes, mm. yes. When I was born, I was a bouncing baby boy. You know, when the the whole community came to rejoice, to say hallelujah. It's a baby, yeah. you know, everybody brought their gifts. At the age of four, the bouncing baby boy became a very small child. A small child that they thought the child was being stopped. So mm. my mother knew what was wrong with me. But she always kept it as a secret. So at the age of four, I was introduced to vitamins that came in sweet packets. Mm. So I always got favored, not knowing that I was actually sick. But she found a way yeah. of always covering up the sickness. So every yeah. disease that she had, I also got uh, as a as a king in a as king. Yet I was the last born in the family. So yeah. everything that I wanted, I would snap my fingers. The following day, I would have it. But not one single yeah. time did I ask myself, say, why am I the only one who gets to be sick? Then when my mother passed away in 2004, it's where I asked mm. myself to say, what's the before? I wanted mm. to die with her because she was the pillar of my life. I wow. started drinking, I started clubbing, I started sleeping out until my family gave me a choice to say, you can either join her or you can fulfill what God sent you to become. I chose mm. the better way. Yeah. I asked myself to say, why and where did I go wrong? That was the question mm. that I kept on asking myself. Why mm. and where did I go wrong? It took me eight years until an aunt told me to say, what happened to you is not of your wrongdoing, but a fortune reduction. So at mm. the age of 30, when I got to realize that I was born with the HIV mm. virus, despite being diagnosed in 2005. And before that, I lost my left lung to a certain virus. It healed. I lost my right mm. eye to the blindness, but 88% is back. So mm. all those things that were coming through were because I was born with the HIV virus. Yet I was mm. aware that that was my being in and out of hospital. Mm. So I chose to say... You know, you, you know what, what is inspiring me now from this story is that despite all these things, all these challenges, all that was thrown at you, all that could have uh -huh. discouraged you, all could have, could have uh -huh. made you give up as a person or lose hope, despite all this, uh -huh. you stayed inspired. You stayed inspired and you chose the right part. I mean, yes. that is so powerful. I mean, I mean, that's so powerful. That's real powerful to hear, really. My brother, that's and, real powerful and, to do you, know, do you know where it starts from? Uh, there was a time my, I, was, I did not do my homework and I slept. My mother woke me up to say, did you do your homework? I says, yes, I did. She says, bring your book. When I mm. showed her the book, she says, no, this was yesterday's homework. Where's today's homework? It was close to midnight. She says, you're going to do this homework until you finish it. I started crying. She says, no, don't cry. Mm. Because they're going to mess you up by zero one. And she told me one thing that I lived by even until today. She said, if something voice, it could never mm. defeat you. And says the yeah. only voice that would defeat you is the one that resides in you. Mm. The only voice that can defeat you is the one that resides inside of you. In wow. Yes. Wow. 
Okay, so I mean, I'm, I'm so I'm so inspired right now. So I I want to ask you quickly. So how did you know through all this? That was it when the being a life coach was birthed inside of you, or how did it all no, start no, being to become? A, no, being a life coach was started from my my vision to say I'm going to tell my story to the rest of the world. I mean, I told myself to say every corner of this world my story will be heard. It started with the same one year of covering every media platform. I told myself to say my life, it's not for my benefit, but for those that don't have hope. I saw myself to say, if I was given this challenge, I was meant to mm. build challenges out of the challenge I was born with. Mm. So my being inspired is to be an inspiration to others. Mm. That's how the life coaching started to say, wherever I go, I always make sure that I make the person see the value of the challenge they have and not the solution. So how would you describe what you went through to become what you are now? How would you describe it? Uh, I was born in a battlefield and today I am the battlefield that people are fighting in. I hope that makes sense. You were born in a battlefield, and today yes. you are the I battlefield. The battlefield that are fighting it. That are fighting it. Please expand no, more. Fighting... That. I, need, I need more okay, insight okay, okay. to that. I'm very lost there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was I was born in a mess, but today mm. I am the message that changes people. In short, you okay. See, the mess is a battlefield. But the message is the ground in which people fight. And then when they're fighting, I go there and say, by the way, what was the reason for fighting? Yeah. Apart from apart from being so a I, life I'm, coach, apart from being a life coach, what, what else again that you are strongly involved in, in terms of uh, inspiring and life-changing experiences for people? Uh, I love, I love uh, artists. Because, you know, I'm, I'm very attentive to music. I've got an ear for music. I mm. don't sing. I don't rap. I don't, I don't even write music. But when I hear a thousand songs, I can pick five songs that inspire mm. me. Because they tell the story of what is real and not something that is out of this world. Yeah. Wow. So, so how old that, are you? I've got that so so how old are okay? I'm not, I'm not supposed to ask you this, but it's not your birthday. So how old are you today? I'm 39, uh, 10 months and 12 days. Wow. Yes. Wow. In December, uh, I'll be close to 40, even though I don't look the part. Okay. So um, when did you when when all these things happened? Uh, I remember you mentioned that you you went clubbing, drinking, and all that. When did you encounter the life yes. of Jesus with yourself? When did you met? When did you give your life uh, back to? Uh, uh, when I was growing up, I was a I was a church player. You know when you say they say playing church, because my mother yeah. would carry me wherever she went, church, yeah. Bible study, home cell, every place. But whenever I went there, I'll be the one who would say, "What time is the food?" Like I, I was always going there just to eat. That was my, 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 my reason for going to accompany her. But every time I went for a service, I got the same message to say, you are a great human being that will change mm. the world. But be young, say, who are you to tell me that? I am not Jesus. I am not a prophet. I am not a pastor. I am just a young man who enjoys eating food. But it was when I got to recap to say, so why... All that time they were being, I was being told those things. It came mm. back to Isaiah 5 verse 11, which is God's word does not go back void until it fulfills what it was sent to do. So I spent most of my life running away from my calling until I got tired of running to say, God, have your way in my life. So how long has it been like this? Uh, since 2012. 2012 is when I got realization to say the life that I live is not of my own. Okay. Yeah. Because it's where I was told that I was a dead person walking 
because there's supposed to be an ICU declared dead and on several ventilator pipes. So, Timbu, we want to, we want to, we want to, you see, the reason why I brought you on board was I want to hear, uh-huh. just, I want, I want you to tell us your journey, your life coaching, your academical, yes. and how yes. it is up again, the challenges, and still, yes. you're still standing, yes. being inspired, nevertheless. Can you tell us that story? Okay, uh, you know, when, uh, when they say I was born a young scientist, at the age of uh, four, I fell from a mango tree, and I discovered that gravity is actually real. At uh, the age of seven, a, mango, a very tall mango tree, because it was the last mango of the, of the season, and I had mm. a cast on my, right, on my right arm. But I said, I'm going to enjoy this mango, because it's the last mango on the tree. I climbed despite mm. having a broken arm. But as I got the mango, the branch that was, I was holding one was an old branch, and it broke. Mm. So I found myself on the ground, and I discovered that gravity is the force that takes any substance from up there to the ground. At the age of seven, I was crushed under a car. That's where I learned the word of what? Pressure. Another time, I was hit with a flying short put on my right side. That same metal ball hit me because I was in the receiving end to say I'm the one who's going to measure the distance. So mm. all those things made me understand to say, why am I so curious or curiosity about things? I always wanted to do dangerous things, but I did not know why I was so involved in doing dangerous things. Mm. But that, that, that energy is what the family was scared about to say, if we tell him that he's got this, he will never stop asking the question to say, why me? So that's why it was a secret that was kept for me. He had to go to save my life. Mm. I studied accounting. I did marketing. But all in all, the passion for all those things was never there. Because I always was of say, why was I brought through into this world? Mm. And mm. that's why I actually had to be charged from each and every company that I worked for, despite being the best person who worked for that company. Mm. So it was all saying you can run your race, but you don't race, never finish every race. Yeah. So it is the sickness that became, that made me stronger than I ever thought I would be. Wow. So I don't regret every challenge that came through because it made me a bigger person than I am. That even today people use me as reference of the man who's got unshakable faith. Mm, wow. Wow, that's, 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 that's very powerful. That's very powerful to hear. I mean, I feel, I feel <laughs> like, you know, you know, you, you took me back again, you know, you took me back into life just to, you know, start appreciating certain things that some of us don't really appreciate sometimes. You know, this gift mm. of life and then the journey of life. We all did not mm. arrive here. We all did not mm. arrive here today. We all started from somewhere. You know, yes. and sometimes we could have died, but we still were here. So many things was thrown at us, but we're still here. I mean, I mean, mm. that's so powerful, man. That's so powerful to hear. All right. On this note, I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will continue with Intimbuwe with a wonderful experience, life story. And I've got a surprise for you after the break. Okay. All right. Let's go on break and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Hello there. Looking for an African movie? Search no further. Cleveland African Movies TV is here for you. We are dedicated to the acceleration of African films, TV series, documentaries, and lots more. Explore our movies at home or on the go. Cleveland Movies is free to watch on Cleveland.com. Don't miss this opportunity. Hurry now. Sign up and subscribe today. All right. Welcome back on Be Inspired with Ugo Tuvi James. Yes, we're back again. Still on with 
in Timbue, all the way from Zambia, based in South Africa, a life coach personality. But not just a life coach, he also has the marketing side and also he's a, somebody who wants to put a smile on everybody's face every day. I mean, who makes that a mandate to say, you know what, as I am every day I wake up from my bed, I want to make it a mandate to put a smile on people's face. People don't care anymore. People are swamped away with their problems and their issues. And here you are. How did you find strength to really, really begin to do what you're doing in terms of putting a smile on people's face? Uh, you know, the, the, like, let, let, me, let me go back to 2004 when my mother passed away after the drinking, the clubbing and everything. I was told by my auntie's uncles to say I was a very expensive expenditure to keep. So they put mm. me on the first bus from Zambia to South Africa, where my my brother, my brother-in-law and my sister were going to take care of me. Upon arriving, I was met with a terrible cough that would not stop. I tried every medical cough mixture. It didn't work. I tried herbal, as my mother taught me. It didn't work. And then when I went to the hospital, oh, it's TB. There's no, I told, I had an argument with the doctor say, I've already had TB three times in my life already. How can I come back for the fourth time? I says, I am the doctor. I know better. So a five yeah. days putum test was taken and the results were negative. So they took an x-ray to say, let's find out what's going on. What they found was a left patch, a whole left lung gone there was only a quarter left and the full right mm. lung and the doctor mm. actually told me to say in my 15 years of practice i've never seen such a case on where someone can survive with one and a quarter lungs mm. i was referred straight to mill park hospital they were excited because it was a new discovery for them they offered me coffee espresso juice you name it because they saw money instead of finding out what the disease was they told me to say, can we do a biopsy? I said, uh, what is that? I said, cutting a piece yeah. of your lung. And I said, no, no. How do you go through my rib cage? And this mm. doctor says, no, we put a pipe through your throat. He's actually using direction to say, we put a pipe and then we cut. I walked out of that office as though there was a bomb. I told my sister, let's go. She says, what do you mean? I said, let's go. She says, what did they say? Let's go. And when I got into the car, it's where I said, thank you, Lord, for me not signing the paper. Mm. I prayed and fasted. The lung got healed that I had to take two x-rays to prove the impossible was made possible. That was number one. Number two, several months later, my right eye was blinded. And the doctor said, it is blind, it will never see again. I was taken to Santon Medi Mills, just there in Santon Square, where the doctor was waiting for me to take out my eye. I said, no, you do mm. your stuff. God do the rest. I was given injections until I could see a pinhole, that same needle pinhole of sunlight, not normal light, sunlight. And mm. as you never see again, every day when I woke up, I would do this until the day I got to see my fingers. I navigated my way back into his office using the eye that was blind. Mm. And he requested an HIV test to be done. And when the HIV test came back positive, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another disease that will come and go. Until they told me that my CD4 count, that's my immune system, was 36. Wow. And my, and my viral load was over 100,000. I says, being a mathematician, I says, ah, so I'm very important. I says, no, you're not important. Your health is wow. so bad. Because when, mm. he, uh, when, he, when he says the 36 that you have should be above 800. The 100,000 wow. viral cells that you have should be on zero. And my mind was blank. And that's mm. where I took the, where am I headed? And I thought I had avoided every disease, but I never knew that the big one was waiting for mm. me. So after wow. being introduced to drugs that I would take 20 capsules that were kept in the fridge. In the morning, you take 10. In the evening, you take 10. That, that 36 went to 490. What do you do? You start throwing away medicine. To say, did you drink your medicine? Yes, I did, but I threw it in the bin. The 490 dropped to 8. I was referred to 5 different specialists. 
and all of them gave up despite paying almost 200,000 rands in medical bills. And the hospital, Helen Joseph said, welcome to our land, but we don't do breadcrumbs. That was the welcome message to say, we don't deal with breadcrumbs. And they said the Americans love research. And it says, what drug is it? And they say, it's Sequinova. And it says, what's so special about it? It says, 98% uh, of death, 2% of survival. Mm. And I saw myself as a human being who say, the first to try it out, toxic, and I'll be famous. Those are the only words that I thought of. I says, give me the paper, I sign, let's start. Wow. There were three of us, were three of us in the entire world. And the last that came to tell the story about the drug that was introduced, yet has never been used. Wow. Because of, because of its toxicity. So I was put under research for five years under the Americans. Even as we speak right now, the, the, the medication that people enjoy nowadays, I am the one that was the guinea pig for five years. But despite all those five years, I have got zero side effects. I have to go to the internet to explain to someone what the side effect is. Mm. So, so did, you, got, did, did you start discovering yourself in all this all period? All that... Because the, 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 you know where the, they say faith got to, you know, I was being finished. When you're in a furnace, you don't burn, you get refined. Mm. The mm. more the challenge came, is the more I put my faith into God to say, if I could sort out this, that, and that, then it came back to what my mother told me that day when I don't do my homework. If something does not have a voice, it could never defeat you. Mm. So it kept on coming back to say, does this have a voice? No, it cannot defeat me or defeat it. Mm. I'm going to so that, that, uh, that same statement that my mother told me, say, if something does not have a voice, it could never defeat you. Mm. It's sucking so much that whatever challenge comes, the question I always ask myself, does it speak to me? No, it doesn't. Therefore, it is a mountain that will be moved. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, amazing. This is life-changing experiences and testimonies, actually. Wow. Okay. So um talking about marketing, you also there's also a side of you that has this vast marketing. How yes. did marketing come out of you in these whole experiences that you've been through? Uh, there was a family that uh, a, a family, I'll say family friends who owned a company which was uh, offering marketing. And they asked me to say, but you're not qualified for marketing. And I told them to say, despite me not being qualified, I believe I can use my creative side to market. And they asked me a question in an interview to say, your friends were interviewed for three days, but since you're creative, you only need 30 minutes. Already I was downsized from three days to 30 minutes. And one of the interviewers said, here's a pencil, can you sell it back to me? I said, it's not a pencil, it's a product. And not only did I ace that interview, but they told me to say, go and start immediately because of my creativeness. And I got to understand that when you're creative and you are given that understanding of what wisdom is, you can oh. actually sell a product to the owner of the product yet you are not part of the product. Mm. Can, you, you, can, find you, tell me, angle. can you tell me more okay. about that, please? <laughs> okay, okay. It's, 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 okay. It's, it's, it's very simple. You know, it's, it's where I'll give you uh, um, an, an HP pencil, the, the, mm. the same red and black one. People do just see it as a pencil, but they don't know that the HB means hybrid pencil. It means mm. that there's so many companies that go in, into making it. Then when you twist it, it says made in Germany and not in China. Mm. Even the pricing of it is higher than the rest because of what is put into it. Yet mm. it's actually a mere pencil that people use every day. So I am marketing HB on behalf of HB, yet I do not work for HB. Wow. So I've got, I've got that creative mind of saying, I can sell 
Mm. I don't need to work for a company in order to market that company. I get to really? understand what value the whole value of what to pharmaceuticals. They say, drink your vitamin C tablets. I'll take an orange and say, oh, by the way, find the source. Don't tell me I say, in very big truth. Don't tell me about potassium. Eat a banana. So I've got to understand information and simplify it. Because someone told me that simplicity is as simple as simple can be. Wow, wow, wow. So on that note, I want to ask you, so where are you now yes. in life? Where are you right now, presently in life with all this? I've got to a point where I'm afraid of what I've got to discover about myself. Because I can have a conversation with a highly learned person, yet mm. people will say, which university did you go to? Where did you graduate? Yet I've never graduated from all those universities that they talk about. I'm accused mm. of being a graduate of Yale, Oxford, Stanford, you name them. But I never even crossed the border to say I'm flying abroad. It is the knowledge that I've got to absorb with the surrounding mm. that I've been put in. So I am I am well how say well knowledge despite being an educational graduate. Mm. So that's what I'm saying that I'm afraid of what I have become despite not having any degrees or any master's degrees in my life. Would you say this is natural or supernatural? It is supernatural. It's yeah. not natural. Because, you know, I've got to understand that it's the 1% that lives in me that allows the rest to, you know, when you allow yourself to be guided by the Holy Spirit, you tend yeah. to, to say things that don't make sense to the rest. But you have to simplify to them to say, it is not I, but he that lives in me. But they don't understand that to say, how does the SIM card and the phone operate? One is one rand, the other one is 17,000. Yet without mm. the one rand SIM card, the 17,000 never operate. So I got to understand the value of the SIM card that every phone that comes my way shall obey to say, without me, you cannot move forward. Wow. <laughs> what, a, what an outstanding. Is, is, is outsta make, no, no, I, I never. I would never have thought of that. I would never have mm -hmm. thought of that. But I, I like the way you broke it down. Now it's actually now making sense to me. Whoa! Mm -hmm. So, so what, what, what's in for you now? What's, what's in? This is the, the year is coming to an end, and what is what, what's in for in Timbuktu for between now and next year? What do what, what, what do we expect from you? You know the the first thing that I've I've uh, I've always talked about. In order for you to, to, to reach the world, you have to sort out the neighborhood. My main goal for the next five years is the 11 countries that are in the Sadiq region. So that's my main goal. The 11 countries, I'm going to send my book, which I have written, and I'm going to give one copy to all the 11 presidents. And the country will ask for the book because I gave their presidents a free copy. Talking about book, you know, I was looking at your profile here. It's also saying that you're also an author. I was going to come yeah. to that before you speak about your book, but let's dive into it. What kind of, you are an author as well. So you've written books. How many books have you written? Uh -huh, yes. Uh, so far, there are three. But there's one which is uh, the main one, which is Crushed Yet Not Destroyed. The Secret That Saved My Life. Come again. Can you repeat it for my viewers to hear? It's crushed, yet not destroyed. The secret that saved my life. Christ not yet destroyed. Christ not yes. yet destroyed. The secret that saved that my saved life. My life, yes. My life, wow. But, but the destroyed is not with an E. It's with an I. It's the okay. D-I-S, not D-E-S. D-I-S-T-O-R-Y-E-D. Okay. Because the D-I-S. 
is that I was not disappointed. I was not disconnected. I was not disapproved. Mm-hmm. I was not disabled. Yeah. Okay. And then the second yeah. book was it called? No, no. The second book is about um, what does it take to to create a challenge, and a challenge out of a challenge, which is called the ABC Boot Camp. It's mm. the attitude that brings out the boldness, which gives you the courage. But the courage is where most people get it wrong, because they stop and say, "As long as I have courage, I will make it in life." But they don't ask the question, which is A S K. A is your attitude, which will provide you the skill of the knowledge of you, which is the understanding of what value you carry in this world and in the kingdom of God. Awful. Talking about that, I would like to know each and every one of mm. these books that you wrote, each and every one of these yeah. books, what, is, what mm. inspired them and what, what, um, what situation inspired them? And can you just break the books down one by one for us? The yes, uh, book a, one, book two, and book three. The, 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 yes, the first one was uh, I wrote a page to my cousin, just one page to say my second chance for life. And she said, no, why are you writing one page? Sit down and ask yourself, what do you remember from your childhood? And as I went back to my upbringing, it's where the title came in to say, Despite being crushed, I was never mm. destroyed. Wow. Wow. And it's, it's a secret that saved my life. But mm. secrets always have a bad ending. But with, in my case, it saved my life. Mm. That's what makes it so unique to say, but how can a secret save your life when a secret always makes the best or the worst out of things? So my mother knew that if she had told me, I would not be alive today. Mm. So in her keeping it from me is how today I can tell my story and use her as a reference to say, despite her keeping the secret, today I can still explain why she kept the secret. Wow, wow, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And the second one? The second one was, uh, it, it actually became after research to say, what is it that allowed me to go through research, come out with flying colors, and be recorded as an expensive expenditure that I overspent the American budget, that they kicked me out as a bad experiment? Because wow. they, tried you, they tried you drugs, which worked, but there were no side effects, which is a bad report on their behalf. Because they cannot give a full report to the pharmaceutical company to say, how, what do we write? So I was a mm. person who would actually say, does it work? Yes. Side effect, zero. Because they were willing to pay me to actually change the story to say, I had this side effect, but I could not lie because I'm a person of integrity. Mm. Even until today, I am still zero. Side effect that even the hospital has failed to understand me and they asked themselves to say, why are we wasting our money on you? Mm, mm. Because out, out of a thousand patients, I'm the one that goes into the hospital to say, which coffee are we drinking today? Mm. So the hospital has become my playground than a place where people get to be healed out of sickness. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So that's where the second book came in to say, wherever I go, I learn to adapt because I have learned what it means to be bold to have the courage mm-hmm. to build the attitude, to give me the skill of the knowledge and understanding of the surrounding that I am in. Mm. So wherever I go, I am mistaken to be one of them, yet I am not one of them. Wow. Wow. So, um, okay, um, on, on this note, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna take another quick break. Um, okay. You know, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we will continue with in Timbwe. You know, I'm mm-hmm. full of emotion right now. I'm already full of emotion. I can't wait to hear the rest of the story. But don't go away. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Clevenard in Diaspora Television is an internet online TV service. 
What sets us apart is a unique combination of hit African content, first and exclusive international free movies, series, music, news, events, documentaries, tourism, teleshopping shows, youth TV programs, and live interviews. Clevenard Diaspora Television is available throughout Sub-Saharan Africa and to the diaspora markets worldwide. Take your entertainment with you wherever you go. Watch on your smartphone, tablet, laptop, smart TV, depending on your device. Watch free movies with Clevenard Movies Television. Stop searching for free movies websites and watch Clevenard Movies Television. Watch your favorite African shows anywhere at any time. Don't forget to check out our top five TV channels created to get you informed. TV1, Clevenard in Diaspora Television. TV2, Clevenard Youth Television. TV3, Clevenard Movies Television. TV4, Clevenard Teleshopping Television. TV5, Clevenard Tourism Television. To start watching, sign up at www.clevenard.com and follow the easy steps. Once you're done, log in to the Clevenard website or app on your device, click on any one of our five TV channels, and hit play. We will be very satisfied and happy to welcome you to our team as one of our new business partners. Contact info at clevenard.com plus 34 631 279811. Website www.clevenard.com. Clevenard. Come back on Be Inspired with Ugo, 2V James. Yes, right here on Be Inspired. I'm still here talking to Intimbue, sharing so much experience and life challenges that he went through, yet still standing strong. These are the kind of stuff that I want you to be inspired about because you're not the only one. That is going through challenges in life. Okay, back to in Timbu. In Timbu, we're back again. So you wrote the third book. I want to hear about the third book. What is the name of the third book and what inspired the third book as well? Yes, the third book is called On Borrowed Time, The Value of One Day. On Borrowed Time, The Value, value of, of, one, of day. one Day. On Borrowed Time, The Value of One uh -huh. Day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Tell us more about that. You know, it's a, where someone asked me a question to say, do you know how many seconds every day has? I says, I do not know. And he told me they are 86,400 seconds. And for him to ask me that question, you know, it actually asked me a question to say, what can I do beyond the question that he asked? So I said, say, what do we live by? Do we control the time? And, you know, as, as you start asking the same question, the Holy Spirit spoke to me to say, do you choose the day you are born? No, you don't. Do you choose the day mm. you die? No, you don't. So mm. we live on borrowed time. We've been given time to do the best in order to please the creator because we are the creation. Mm. So that inspires you to say, what are you doing with the 86,400 seconds that you are given every day? If you ask a question to say, are you wasting it? Are you complaining? Are you building? Are you changing lives? Or are you inspired? But despite what you do, the 86,400 seconds will always account to say, out of this day, what did you make out of them? The following day, you get more. Because on judgment, they say, on all those days that you were given, what did you do in order to enhance the kingdom of God? Mm, so mm. the on borrowed time tells you to say, today, tomorrow is not promised. It's, it's in Matthew 6, to say, but seek first the kingdom of God. And it's all these yeah. things shall be added. Yes. Now 34 mm. is the one that really moves me. It says, do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has got its own worries. Mm. The worries of day are more than enough for you to take care of. Mm. So that's mm. what inspired mm. the say we live on borrowed time. Mm. We always plan our tomorrow, yet you have not even covered today. That's wow. why even the word of God says, this is the day 
Not this is the tomorrow. Not this is the yesterday. The this day, is the, the day, day that the Lord has made. There you go. I what? I shall be glad. And I shall be glad in it and rejoice. There wow. you go. So this is the day that the Lord has made that I shall be glad and rejoice in it. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. So it goes back That's to one borrowed time, the value of one day. The value of one day. Huh. Yes. Come on now. What what did Come you on do now. on that day? Mm. Huh? It takes one day for you to become somebody. It takes one day for you to become nobody. One exactly. day. One day. Because one even day. the lottery one says the, the lottery says one day is one day. Why do they say that? Because they understand mm. the value of one day, and we live mm. on borrowed time. Mm. Mm. So this inspired book of yours, and that is so inspiring. And yeah. I mean, I, I want to first and foremost, I want to order those books myself for myself to read. And but I want to know. Uh, for people listening and watching you right now, listening to you right now, watching you, yes. where can they get hold of you, these books? Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll share my, my email. They can order via email because uh, my website is currently still under reconstruction. Where and again, I forgot, to, I forgot to mention to you I, that Clever Net TV, Clever Net TV can also help you digitalize your, your, your books as well. We can help you market it. Well, so we can also yeah we can also help you promote it so you don't have so to this, even worry so, so, so this is the day that the lord has made yes so, so, yes so exactly right now okay uh sorry to cut you you know what you've just confirmed where can they find the book you have, yes you on, clever the net, on clever net tv yes. come on now <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to find the answer when you already know the answer. It's like you said, this is the day the Lord has made, so I'm on it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so you, you uh, ask, so where fun. can we find this? Where can we find this? Yet you, as the one who's asking, say, oh, by the way, when this show is finished, ask me how we can access this from this clever land. Exactly. Huh? Right. Yes. Just in case you want to get hold of the books, all the books you mentioned, you can always get them on Clevernet TV. We will give you more details on that. But let's move forward quickly for the sake of time. Um, we want to find out what what do, what word for people listening to you out there, your fans and people. What you know? See, I, I don't know if you notice that our world has changed. People are more yes, wicked. People are more mm-hmm. desperate. People can. Yes. Our values are dropping every day. Yes. People yes. are not. People are not. People are, are desperate to. People are betraying each other. There's a quest for self, 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 self. Mm-hmm. What advice mm-hmm. would you give the youth of today and the women of today or the young men of today out there that are striving or struggling in these things? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you a very simple story that happened to me. You know. Wherever I go, you know, I meet strange people or different people. And one day I met uh, these uh, guys who pick up the, the bins. The, the, say they're recyclers. The guys that pick uh, plastic uh, tins. And he told me something that even until today I remembered. He says he's a graduate, but he made the mistake because he hid behind the reason. And I said, but I don't understand what that means. He says, don't hide behind the reason but be the reason why the reason should hide behind you Mm. Mm. people always say because everyone is doing it i will do it and then when things go bad to say because everyone was doing it sorry i want to i want to no no i want to write that i want to write that down don't hide behind the reason don't hide behind the reason Uh uh-huh but be the reason but be, be the reason. The reason why what? the reason should hide behind you. Be the reason, and why, why the reason the, the should hide behind you. Why should the reason hide behind you? Wow. Yes. yes. Behind you. So carry it's on. About carry the, I, I don't it, have to it, touch that. It's all, it's, it's all about the blame game. 
to say I'm here because I was this. I am here because my father did this. We always have someone to say it was you who made the mistake. But what part do you play in the mistake? We mm. never account for everything. It's always it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Mm. You are found in a nightclub. The nightclub is raided. You get arrested and say, but I was not part of the problem. But you were in the place mm. that was raided. You are hiding behind the reason. Mm. Mm. And saying, despite me not being there, I'm the one watching on TV that where I was supposed to be, it was raided. So what I'm trying to tell people is stop blaming the system. Be ahead of the blame so that the system can blame you for not following what it does. So with this, with, with this wickedness that is going around, people say, because there's weakness, I'll follow suit. Follow the righteous way. The wickedness will say, how come you are not part of us? Mm. It's because I was never part of you. It's the choices that we make, which goes back to the third book I told you about on borrowed time, the value of one day. What do you do with the 86,400 seconds? Do mm. you blame someone? You become the bigger person to say, I will stand up despite mm. the hardships. Mm. So what? Well, okay, now I, I kind of get that though. You know, um, where um, we we constantly want to do a blame game on our mistakes, yes. and we, we don't we don't, yes. we don't we don't we don't we don't take responsibilities on them. I kind of thank you for that. Thank you yes. for actually touching that. Um, yes. But yes. I want to ask you. Uh, so what? Um, if you are not if you are not in Timbuktu today, or life coach, or author, or, mm -hmm. or or marketer, what would you have become apart from all this? What else could you have been, would, would have uh, been doing? Yeah, I, I, would call, I would call myself as a. I would be the best comedian in the world. Comedy, comedy. I, I would be the comedy. I, you know. My life is, is so full of comedy that I don't need a script in order to entertain the audience. Just, so, just okay, my okay. life only. My so life who's your only. favorite? Uh, yeah, so who's your favorite comedian? If you're talking about comedy, who's comedy? Who's, uh, who's the comedy a, guy that you look up to? There, there's, a, there's one who really inspires me so much. It's a, a Kim, Kim Okoe. The, is it Okwa? Oh, Nkemo. Yeah, Nkemo. that's the you, you know, you know, you know, every every movie that he has done, I have never missed any of them. Because you mm. know, he is he is so interesting that he makes he educates you in such a way that it's so funny, but very educative. Whether he's mm. a poor man or a rich man, he's got so much wisdom. And in that wisdom, he gives the comedy through wisdom. Mm. So you've got, to, you've got to allow people to say, how can you give comedy, which is educative, but it makes people laugh? Mm. Wow. You see, you've got to wow. change the way you say, don't just make people laugh. Find a way of teaching people to say, when I went to the hospital, they gave me coffee because I'm a VIP. What does that mean? I'm a very important patient. You see, it changes. I'm not a VIP that they know. I'm a very important mm. patient. To say, when mm. I go to the hospital, they give me coffee because I'm a VIP. But someone say, ah, but how can you be a VIP in the hospital? Because I'm a very important patient. Not a person, yeah. a patient. Yeah. So it's comedy on its own because you're confused. No, I'm not confused. I'm just telling you as it is because you're used to what makes people laugh, which is their comedy. But I'm teaching you that wherever I go, I'm a very important patient. That's mm. why I'm offered coffee when I go to the hospital 
and that doesn't make sense. How can you go to the hospital as though it's a restaurant? You see? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> very, 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 very inspirational. Well, right, that's good. You, you, you're a man of you're a man of wisdom. You've got deep sense of wisdom, and I can see you. Mm-hmm. I can see you dishing out all this in in your in your answers and everything. You know, uh, I totally appreciate mm-hmm. that. Um, you know, I celebrate you. You know, I celebrate you. I celebrate. I celebrate this moment you're having. I celebrate you having time to share this with us on being inspired. You know, this is what this is what we stand for. We wanna we wanna want people to hear your story. And thank God you make our time and you're sharing with us. So in random up because of time, and I don't know, I know you're a very busy person. We all are, and then because other people are also busy. Uh so what would what what is it? What is the next level for you in 2022 to 2023? Uh, right now, the, 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 I forgot to tell you, uh, Transnet, uh, I did a motivational talk with them in 2014. You know, I gave them a question, even until today they haven't found the answer. Because I asked them to say, I have a reason to live. What is their reason for living? And I walked out to say, I'll send you the invoice. Just that question in the audience of almost 300 people say, I have a reason to live. The question is, what is your reason to live? And today, I think it was uh, last month, they told me because you asked that question almost seven years ago, we're going to give you the project where you're going to uh, have where the train train goes. So I've become the face of the train that will allow those who've got no hope to say, so this is a person who not only gives knowledge, but is able to be seen, to say, I am the living proof of what I say. Mm. Wow, interesting. So on that note, I would like to ask you this. So if you were to be mm-hmm. a president of a country, what would you do differently? Yes. The first thing I would deal with health. The health system is in shambles. Because without health, nobody can enjoy their wealth. Mm. It is the health that people take for granted, yet it is the vital of every aspect of a human being. Because if you're not healthy, how can you be proactive? You can have all the money into the world, but if you're not healthy, you will never enjoy that money. So the first thing that I would deal with is the health. As long as the health system is in order, everyone else shall follow suit. Because with Mm. health, there's the healing aspect, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, or mental. Mm. So Mm. what I stand for is health. Wherever I go, they call me the health guy. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you on that one. Um, so any last word for your fans or people listening to you right now? Uh, I think it's, uh, what the, this is the day that the Lord has made. And, uh, oh, no, no. It's the, the stone that was rejected became the chief cornerstone. That, that's the last message. Because when you ask, ask yourself to say, if I'm the stone that was rejected, how can I find my value to know that without me, they will never complete the race? No, no, express it more on that. And, okay, you remember there's a, um, we, we've all got hardships, but what yeah. is your story from the, from the hardship that you've been put through? Yeah. If you're, still, if you're still standing, that means you still have the energy or the spirit mm. to tell of your hardship. To say, I was yeah. once a poor man, but today I am not. I was once a blind man, but today I am not. Mm. If you can tell about your hardships, that means you still need to discover yourself to say, you are beyond the hardships that you have gone through. Mm. What doesn't do you certainly makes you stronger. 
as a wise man once said. Wow, thank you so much, in Timwe. It's been an awesome time with you. You've heard it all, everybody. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's one thing I stand by every day. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I want you to keep going, keep pushing, keep standing, keep fighting. Don't give up hope. No matter what, keep going, keep fighting. One day you will get there. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for your. Oh, is there any word you want to say something? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just saying that that thing you've got it. All right. It's a thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I just want to say everybody that participated today, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been an awesome time with Timbuwe. What a word. What a word. I think I'm going to have to bring him back at some other time, dude. I think there's more he still needs to give to us. Maybe uh, there's two more he needs to unravel for us, isn't it? So uh, we will bring him back at some point again to come and be with us here. But anyway, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Keep your head up. Don't back down. Don't bury your head in shame. You have a God. No matter what you do, stay strong and keep fighting. Never give up hope. Never give up hope, no matter what. So this is where we say thank you for today and God bless you all. Till we see you again on Be Inspired on Thursday. Stay tuned and don't go away. Make sure you tune in on time. We will. Sorry for the delay today. We'd like to apologize that we came a little bit late today because of some people we have scheduled are having a, either network period, network time, or they're having low shedding because the world is a little bit disorganized now. But thank you so much for waiting and standing with us. For those of you out there who are artists and you want to market your product or you want to market your music, we would like you to sign up with CleverNet TV, www.clevernettv.com. Go sign up now so that you can upload yourself or you can market your stuff or you can anything that you want to be, want us to be able to work with you on, CleverNet TV is there. CleverNet TV is a TV that is diaspora. It caters for everybody all around the world to bring us together so that we can begin to work with one another and grow as God-giving gift that God has given us in relationship. So we're here to serve you. Clevernet TV is here to serve you. We're here to expand your business. We're here to take your music to another level. Please sign up and upload. Sign up and upload. If you need more clarity on that, please write to us. We have our website and email there. Write to us and we will respond to you as soon as possible. All right. I hope you've enjoyed yourself today on Be Inspired. Take care and God bless you. One love.